Uh, good morning and welcome. My name is Ron Nakasone, and I have a exhibition at your institution there, the Dayton Art Institute. D due to COVID, I was unable to uh, be with you in person on site, but this is the best we can do. So the art of calligraphy is very old. It's as old as, almost as old as Chinese culture. <clears throat> And we, it's a very simple craft or art. We have an inkstone, inkstone, a ink stick, brushes, and paper. Uh, first of all, I want to speak about brush. There are all kinds of brushes. Um, the original brush was very flat and very short, almost like a short paint brush. And gradually it became longer and, uh, and rounder. And finally it, uh, it became round as, as we know the brush today. A brush is made up of many different kinds of bristles. I believe this is bare brush, it's very stiff. Uh, this is wool, uh, sheep hair. And this is a bamboo brush. I don't use it too often because uh, it's very stiff and I like my brushes to be very supple. Uh, brushes come in all sizes, uh, little ones. Uh, Big ones, bigger ones, and large ones. I haven't used this brush in many years uh, because for one thing, it's uh, when you fill it with ink, it's very heavy. And I don't have the strength anymore to wield such a heavy brush. Uh, ink, as I mentioned, we have an ink stone, an ink stick, and nowadays people are lazy, and so am I. We, we get ink from a bottle like this, all kinds of bottles. You can purchase these, and usually it's very thick, so you mix it with water and you thin it out. And we have paper. Uh, there are all kinds of paper. They're um, machine-made paper, which I really don't like. Um, uh, these are cheap paper, but they're good for practice. This is a, a better quality paper. And this is handmade paper by a friend of mine. And you can see the quality of uh, quite, quite different. And we, uh, you need to have what we call a paper weight. It's called a bunching to place on the paper so it doesn't move around. Sometimes you may need to. Let's see, and then you have a little water spout called suiteki. I couldn't find mine, so this is actually a sake bottle. You can put water inside instead of osake. And usually we have what we call a tejon. A tejon is a sample which you place on this. 
uh, on here on the left side. And uh, usually the Tehun is a sample that is written by the instructor, which you will copy or practice from studying the brush strokes and, and the quality of line and space. Uh, but uh, rather than using a tejon, I now usually go to what we call uh, koten, classical pieces of calligraphy that have been passed on throughout the centuries. And for that, we go to uh, these books such as this I have in hand here. And these are samples from calligraphy samples from the Chinese. And, uh, and, and this would be, becomes my tehon, my sample from which I study from. So lines, the calligraphic line is a very important piece of the calligraphy. And lines are everywhere. If you look at this, this is a line. My arm is a line. The patterns of my shirt are made up of lines. And lines are all over the room where we are. The walls, the doorways, the windows, all consist of lines. But we need to, what we want in calligraphy is a vibrant, dynamic, and vital line that is alive. We want it alive because the person who is writing that is a live person. It's not a, a robot or a machine. And, and the, the calligraphy should be appreciated as the handwritten word. So let me show you samples of lines that are exciting. All of these lines were written by the same brush. The brush, because it is very soft, is very supple. And it, it's a subject, it can be uh, manipulated in such a way that it can be very thin or very broad. But you'll notice this, this first line that I wrote. Um, the surfaces of the top and the bottom line, the ending and the, be the beginning and the beginning and the ending sort of ends or begins and ends without ending or beginning. The Lines are part of a greater movement. So when I draw a line, I make a line here, the movement begins here. So the movement begins before I hit the paper. And ends somewhere over here. And the line is a, just a, a trace of the movement of a greater movement.
such as this sample over here, lines can be very sharp. The edges are, I always like I liken this kind of line to our long distance runner whose muscles are very plump and very sharp. And this is the sample from the, what we call the classic. And this is a good sample of the sharpness of the line. So we hit the paper. And so we have a sample of this line here. In contrast, we have lines that are much warmer. You notice that the surfaces are moist and warm. And I would liken this to be like a sumo wrestler whose muscles are more rotund but uh, very hard. Now the other important thing is a line to have rhythm. That is, uh, when you write a line, you do not write a single line, but a whole character. So, this is a sample uh, which gives us taste of what we call the cutting edge of the brush. The brush is like a, should be considered almost like a sword, which it cuts across the paper. Um, this particular piece called Muson or So, which is actually the title of the show, uh, is a very simple line, a very simple space. It's more space than form, uh, but we do not feel uh, the emptiness of the space in or around the circle. It's, a, it's not a uh, visual sense. And the energy of this great dragon emanates beyond the boundaries of, of the frame of the mounting and the frame and reaches out and grabs you and invites you in. So uh, let me illustrate. A Diokan is a very difficult uh, person to study because it takes great concentration and a steady hand.
Um, finally, I want to demonstrate or show the creative potential of the brush. And this is a sample from Ikeno Taiga, who was a contemporary of um, maybe older contemporary of Ryokan. I don't think they ever met. But uh, Ikeno Taiga had a distinct personality. And I turned to him from time to time because I want to see, see how he as it, as it is uh, follow the form but break it. I, I want to return to uh, Ryokan and conclude the uh, Ryokan. And I'm going to try to write this character called Yume, meaning dream. Uh, this is a very famous piece of Ryokan. Uh, thank you very much. This was a simple demonstration on the art of calligraphy. It's a very simple art. It, all you need is a brush and ink and paper. And of course, practice, practice, practice. And at the end, you must give up your practice and let your imagination flow. Uh, well, I should say, if you're studying calligraphy or if you're interested uh, to take up the art and craft of a calligraphy, uh, don't give up. It takes at least 10 years uh, to get a feel of the brush. Thank you very much.